I'm reading from Edward Bohr's Black Sand New and Selected Poems, published by People Tree in 2013, and the poem is titled Traveling Man. Man, you travel far. Remember those days when they praised you for what they called your simple native craft, secure in their belief it knew its place, colonial backwaters, ramshackle, picturesque ports. But craft is craft, and a man has the pulse of the sea in his wrist, or he doesn't. So when at last they rose to cheer you, master mariner, maneuvering your craft, that had encompassed the world into that port from which they once sailed to claim the world. And hailed you now as man, as craftsman. I stood in that crowd by the quayside, the only one not clapping. And anyone glancing at me then might say, But look this man, him dead or what? Him don't see history in the making? But my joy was too much for display. It needed the space of silence. Why bother to tell them I knew the place where the journey began? That you were not alone, that you brought with you a people, that you had earned the silence beyond applause. I'm reading from Lauren K. Aline's Honeyfish, which was published by People Tree in 2019. I've just discovered Lauren's work and she's a beautiful poet, very talented, very good. I'm reading something from Honeyfish called Still Life with Empty Beach, which may well uh, speak to the situation most of us are in these days. There is so much emptiness here. The two chairs marooned on an empty deck. The foot of space like a chasm between them. The respectful distance the thatch of wild grass keeps from their bodiless frames. The frames themselves made of taut planks each holding itself apart from its neighbor, each plank made of a million separate splinters, some splintered from themselves, and deeper, molecules, atoms, electrons circling nuclei they never bump into, everything moving closer, closing in, but never completely. What I'm saying is we are made of spaces. No thing can breach, bridge or heal. Not longing, not touch, not even love. I'm reading from Piero, my book published by People Tree earlier this year. I'm reading a poem dedicated to Derek Walcott. The poem is titled White Cedar, in memoriam Derek Walcott. The poem is a glossary variation where I take four lines of a poem from Derek Walcott, then I interweave my own lines into. Derek's lines. Derek's lines come from his poem, The Prodigal, and here are his lines. Make room for the accommodation of the dead, their mounds that multiply by the furrowing sea, not in the torch-lit catacombs of your head, but by the almond-bright, spume-blown cemetery. Then my own poem begins. I thought it was over, the season of lilac carpets along verges, on green lawns, Petals of Poirier stepping off currents of soft air, settling with tender ease on earth's lanes. But here they are again, in May, everywhere, with a morning bassoon of wood doves. And yes, indeed, incredibly, to me ignorant of seasons of flora, I see the fragrant Easter spider lily blooming from unexpected corners of my without-you days. Make room for the accommodation of the dead, you muttered in a dark saying that seemed to mute memory, to remove yourself to needle-leaved casuarinas of Pigeon Island, out of our too familiar embrace, too smothering adulation, our borrowing eyes searching out your diaries. And the cascading cedar blossoms raced the grey heron to surf chastened ledges of Bacune Point, the forlorn pool, deserted studio, vacant easel, and their mounds that multiply by the furrowing sea after gentle curtsies through golden late afternoons, and to Lacomet and Martinique and Mazouk, past delicate carvings of white cedar figurines in the sculptor's garden, and other such benedictions. Meantime, autocrats of mammon desecrate your groves and beaches. They set iron beasts to holy roots of the blessed cedar with arrogant pride. 
They mock the memory of your protests. They will not heed angry alarms of scissor-tailed gulls, stubborn silence of drought. So we want your grey-eyed fierceness here, not in the torch-lit catacombs of your head, not in tiresome fictions of some mythical you, but impossibly, like Atlantic breakers glimpsed through bamboo of violated pralin, here now. Heraldic egress lift your lines from Mount Fortune to Mola Chic, with the awkward grace of their perfect symmetry. The flowering mauve of cedar tumbles through green fern around Souffre, and we leaf your last book, not near your beloved Ben Piton, but by the amandbright, spume-blown cemetery. White cedar for Derek Walcott.